Let me ask about Iraq. You were at a town hall meeting here mm -hmm. uh, in Derry, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and here's what you... I'm glad you've been paying attention to the town hall I meeting. I follow you closely, Senator, believe me. <laughs> here's the question and answer. President Bush has talked about our staying in Iraq for 50 years. Maybe 100. Is, uh, is that how long? Is we've, that been in, we've been in South Korea. We've been in Japan for 60 years. We've been in South Korea for 50 years or so. That'd be fine with me so as long as Americans, answer. as long as Americans are not being injured or harmed or wounded or killed. Then it's fine with me. In November, you go to the American people and say, I'd be all right with having U.S. troops in Iraq for the next 100 years. Most importantly, so would the American people if Americans aren't dying. Uh, we have a base in, in, in the neighboring country of Kuwait, a very large base. We have a base in Turkey. We have bases in Japan, Germany. We've had bases there. It's not American presence that bothers the American people. It's American casualties. And if Americans are safe wherever they are in the world, Americans, uh, the American people don't mind that. So what I believe we can achieve is a reduction in casualties to the point where the Iraqis are doing the fighting and dying, we're supporting them, and over time, then it'll be the relation between the two countries. With Kuwait, they want us there, and they want us there for a long time, so we're glad to be there. The Saudis, they didn't want us there for various reasons, so we left. That's going to depend on relations between the United States government and the Iraqi government. My point was, everybody says, how long are we going to stay? My p point is, how, when are we going to succeed, which we are succeeding now, so that the Iraqi government is functioning and we have stability in the region, instability in Iraq. What kind of troop stability. levels for the next 10, 20 years? I, I, you know, that, that's very hard to say, but the, but the troops would be out of harm's way. That's the key to it. Would you and have permanent bases? If, if that seems to be necessary in some respects, it depends on the threat. I mean, look, what if, what if uh, Jordan falls? What if there's another war with Israel? What if Egypt, uh, that, that there's tremendous upheaval? This is a very unstable part of the world, as we just found out in Pakistan. So it depends on our national security threats and the needs to meet them. But right now, I just want to look you in the eye and tell you that Al-Qaeda is on the run and they're not defeated. But we are succeeding, and many, many experts said that the surge would not succeed and said that I was wrong. And my friend, I was right. Looking back at the beginning of the war, back in March of 2003, yep. if you had known then, if the intelligence came out and said, we know that Saddam Hussein does not have biological mm -hmm. uh, or, or chemical mm -hmm. or a nuclear mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. would you still have voted to authorize the war? Well, uh, uh, obviously, given information that we have, m m changes your decision-making process. But Saddam Hussein was still a threat. The sanctions were breaking down. There was a multi-billion dollar oil for food pro uh, scandal in the United Nations. Uh, the, uh, every day, American airplanes were being shot at. Saddam Hussein had used and acquired weapons of mass destruction in the past, and there was no doubt there was going to be in the future. The problem in Iraq, my friend, was not whether we went in or not. It's the way it was mishandled after the initial invasion. Yeah, but Senator, it's an important question because President, Bush, important. Has, President Bush has said, yeah. even if I knew yeah. he did not have biological, yeah. chemical, yeah. or nuclear program, yeah. I still would go into Iraq to topple Saddam Hussein. Would I, you have? Uh, yes. But the point is that if we had done it right, it's been well chronicled in many, in many books, you and I wouldn't be even discussing that now, the mishandling after the war. Look, I met with a high-ranking former al-Qaeda operative in Iraq recently, and I asked him, how did you succeed? He said, the lawlessness after the initial invasion and uh, Abu Ghraib. And so they were able to recruit people because of the disorder and the mishandling. So you would not be asking me if it had been mishandled. You would have said, if because we succeeded and established a stable Iraq, you'd have said, aren't you glad we went in? Because Saddam Hussein, one of the most brutal, most terrible dictators in history, who fought in several wars, used weapons of mass destruction, invaded his neighbor, is now gone from the world scene. That's what you'd be saying. But I think there'd be a real debate with the, with the, amongst the American people if we were told he did not have biological, chemical, nuclear... If frogs had wings, 
things. Look, Tim, we can talk about lots of hypotheticals. Would we have would we have stopped Saddam Hussein from going into Kuwait back in '91 when when he went in? Would we have uh, would we have uh, said that the Chinese aren't going to cross? The, would we have known if we had known that the Chinese were going to cross the Yalu uh, in the Korean War? Would we have done it differently? I'd love to get into thousands of historical hypotheticals with us, but what we knew at the time and the information we had at the time that every single intelligence agency in the world believed he had weapons of mass destruction. So bottom line, the war was so not a mistake. The, the, the war, quote, the invasion was not a mistake. The handling of the war was a terrible mistake. <laughs>